Hello, I'm Jason Harris. I'm one of the growers here at Saracenia Northwest. Now before joining the crew here as the shipping manager, I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, where I grew and propagated carnivorous plants such as the Saracenia, the Venus flytrap, and even hardy sundews. Now many folks said it couldn't be done because of the high heat, intense sunlight, and the low to no humidity. So in this video, I'd like to share with you what I did to successfully grow carnivorous plants in the desert southwest. I first got into growing these plants in 2009. Within the first few years, I found out which plants grew well in Phoenix and which ones didn't. The Saracenia that grew best for me were Flava, Leucophila, Purpurea venosa and Rosia, Minor and even Alata. Hybrids of these plants also grew fantastically and really would show off their hybrid vigor. For sundews, I found that Drosera tracei, Intermedia, and some hybrids such as Dreamsicle tolerated the heat well. Another plant that did well was the Venus flytrap. I tried out a number of varieties, such as the King Henry, G16, DCXL, and even the B52, just to name a few, and nearly all of them did well. Now, I did encounter plants that struggled in the desert heat. These included most Oreophila hybrids, Drosera rotundifolia, Drosera anglica, the Red Dragonfly trap, and Darlingtonia. These plants didn't grow well, even after giving them time to acclimate to the desert environment. So, now you know which plants to get. The next important thing is timing. You want to give your plants time to adjust to the heat, intense sunlight, and low humidity. In Phoenix, it can easily be 100 degrees as early as April. So if you get your plants in the late spring or in the summer, you're going to shock them. Therefore, the best time I'd recommend getting your plants is mid-September through March. April is still possible, but May through August is going to be a bit rough for your new plants. When you get your new plants, the first thing you'll want to do is change the soil to a coarser mix. A coarser mix will dry out quicker, but we're going to use that to our advantage. The mix I used was 40% peat moss to 60% perlite, or 2 parts peat to 3 parts perlite. Most nurseries use a 50-50 mix, which is okay, but I always repotted my plants to a 40-60 mixture. This coarse mix will increase soil evaporation and help prevent your plant's roots from overheating. The size of the pot you'll select is also important to preventing the soil from overheating. Small pots will overheat quickly in the sun. So what I did was use large pots that were at least 6 inches or even bigger. Terracotta can also be useful because it allows water evaporation through the sides which will help keep the soil cool. I also use large bins as water trays to shield the pots from sunlight. And I use light colored pots whenever possible. Now, if you live in the desert, you'll probably already know that your water is very high in minerals. At first, I just used distilled water. However, as my collection grew, I invested in a reverse osmosis system, so you may want to consider one for yourself as your collection grows. When I watered my plants, I always kept the water level low, just a couple inches from the bottom of the pot. Remember, we're using a coarser soil mix, and we're relying on evaporation to help keep the soil cool. If the water level is too high, we won't get that cooling effect. I also cooled down my plants by top watering them when temperatures were getting above 105 degrees for extended periods. So on those really hot days, I watered my plants in the early morning and the late evening, and my plants responded well to that. Besides protecting my plants from the heat, I also had to protect them from the intense sunlight. But how do you do that when these plants need full sun? Well, in the early growing season, from about March to May, I placed my plants in direct sunlight, positioning them to get as much morning sun as possible. As I got into June and the days were getting hotter, that's when the shade cloth needed to go up. When my collection was small, I constructed a makeshift structure to shade the plants from about 11 a.m. through the rest of the afternoon. At first, I tried 50% shade cloth, and the results were not good. The new growth was floppy and had little to no color. I ended up using 30 to 40% instead, and the results were much better. As my collection grew, I used a greenhouse frame to support a shade cloth with reflective material and 30% shade. I had it up from about early June through mid-September. So the idea of the shade cloth is just to take the edge off while still providing strong sunlight. So when choosing a shade cloth, I'd recommend going with a lightly colored or reflective material and use a 30% or a 40% shade. Finally, what about humidity? Well, what about it? In the 10 years of growing Saraceni and flytraps in Phoenix, I've never had a problem with low humidity. And if you'd like more information about the myths of high humidity, read Jacob's download, The Ultimate Carnivorous Plant Guide for Beginners. He has a fantastic section about humidity, and of course, he used my plants as examples. So to recap, 
When growing the outdoor carnivorous plants in a desert environment, select plants suited for the heat. For Saracenia, choose a lotta, flava, leucophila, minor, purpurea venosa, rosea, and hybrids of these species. For sundews, tracea and intermedia are good species to start with, and of course, almost all fly traps will grow fine. Use a coarse mix of two parts peat moss and three parts perlite. The extra perlite will aid in water evaporation to cool the soil. Use large pots, six inches or larger, to buffer the heat. Keep the water level in your trays low, no more than two inches. Top water your plants during those long stretches of hot days. During the hottest parts of the day, shelter your plants with 30 to 40% shade cloth. So if you live in the desert, I hope this will get you started in trying your hand at growing carnivorous plants. And if you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe for more videos just like this. And check out growcarnivorousplants.com to see our inventory of cold hardy and tropical carnivorous plants, growing supplies, and more. Thank you for watching and good growing.